This is the smallest 25,000 milliamp hour 100 watt power bank. This is a dream come true for a MacBook Pro owner. Something this small, stick it in your backpack. If you need extra time on your laptop, you've got it. But does it work? How well does it work? We're going to find out in this video. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be checking out the NEU 100 watt, 25,000 milliamp hour, I think this is called the P63 is the model number, and this is a power bank that was sent over from NEU, so thank you to NEU for sending this over for review. As always, I'm not compensated for this review, all the opinions are my own, and the company does not get to see this video before it's launched. So with that being said, let's go ahead and check this thing out. So I'm going to get right to it and open this bad boy up and we'll see what we got inside. All right, so inside the box, we've got, of course, the power bank itself. And yes, this is a small little device for 25,000 milliamp hours. We've got a little bag that comes with it. That's kind of cute. And then, of course, the user manual. Now, let's take just a quick physical look at this before we start testing it out. And it's got overall kind of a, uh, you know, slightly rubbery texture. And I guess that's good because it won't, like, slip out of your hands or slip off your lap if you've got it, you know, lying on your knee while you're charging up your laptop. But that's good, so it's not completely slick like this. It's got some texture to it. We've got one USB-A and two USB-Cs. We'll look at what all the specs are on those. We've got what's probably going to be a screen here. Push button on the side. And yep, we've got a screen right in front with the capacity. And i got to love this. All the specs right here on the back. So you can remember how much to expect to get out of it and how much you expect to put into it. And I like that it's got the little chart here that shows if you're using multiple cables or connected to multiple devices, what the ports are going to be capped at. So we'll take a look at that once we start checking out all of the specs. But yeah, let's take a look at this compared to, let's say, like the Anchor 20,000 milliamp hour. And this is a really nice power bank, but you can see it's quite a bit bigger than this one, despite the fact that it's got a smaller capacity. Here's another similar size one. This is 10,000 milliamp hours. This is a little bit taller, but not quite as, I guess, chunky. And here, of course, is the Jackery Explorer 100, and that is a 100 watt hour, or just shy of 100 watt hour. We'll look to see what this one says watt hour wise. I think it's going to be pretty darn close to that. And that's really what we need to kind of compare these with instead of milliamp hours, because the rated voltages of all of them could be different. They could be the same. I'm not 100% sure. So once we start talking and comparing apples to apples, we'll be comparing watt hours. So let's get all these other guys out of the way and start looking at some of the specs on this NU power bank. All right, so we're going to refer right to the back of the power bank and look at the specs that it has printed on there. And again, this is the model P63-E1. They have many different models of power banks, different shapes, different sizes, wireless, non-wireless. Some are higher capacity, some are lower capacity. But what we've got here is a 25,000 milliamp hour. And like I said, we're going to refer to this just in watt hours, and this is 91.25 watt hours. So a little bit shy of that Jackery, but more capacity than those other two that we were looking at. And that is a good amount of energy stored into that little tiny package. Now it shows right below that the output capacity. So for typical energy use, it shows about 80 watt hours. And that's just going to be because of the efficiency of how much energy you put in versus how much energy you can get out of it is going to differ just based on the internal electronics and how well it is at converting power. I would say if it's got a 91 watt hour capacity and it can get 80 watt hours out of that, that's a pretty good percentage. Now, as far as charging this thing, it says it has an input voltage of 5 volts at 3 amps, 9 volts at 3 amps, 12 volts at 3 amps, 15 volts at 3 amps, or 20 volts at 3.25 amps. So if you got a charger that's rated at the 65 watts power delivery, then this will go ahead and charge up at 65 watts. We'll definitely test that out. And then as far as outputs, it's got output 1, 2, and 3. And are those labeled the same on the top here? Yes, they are. In out 1, out 2, and out 3. So as we look at out 1, which is actually the in out, it's rated at 5, 9, 12, and 15 volts, all at 3 amps or 20 volts at 5 amps, and that's where you get that 100 watt capacity output. Now in that second USB-C, you've got 5, 9, and 12, and 15 volts at 3 amps. 
So that's a, up to a max of 45 watts output. And then the USB-A, which is the output 3, is 5 volts at 3 amps, 9 volts at 2 amps, 12 volts at 1.5 amps, or basically your standard 18 watt output. Now once you start using these ports together, it says output 1 and 2, which is going to be your two USB-Cs, shows a 65 watt max out of one and a 45 watt max out of the other, which is a total of 110 watts. So that's pretty impressive, coming out of two ports there. Output 1 and Output 3, which would be your main output and your USB-A output, is 65 plus 18, or 83 watts max. Now if you're using just Output 2 and Output 3, it's showing a total capacity of 15 watts total. So those two ports must be sharing something. And then if you use that Output 2 and 3 in conjunction with Output 1, then you're getting 65 watts out of the Output 1. And then again, 15 watts total out of the 2 and 3. So that's an 80 watt max total coming out of those three ports. So enough talking about these silly numbers. Let's go ahead and plug this thing in and get it charging up and see how fast it can charge. Now to test the charging speed, I'm going to use an Anchor desktop charger here, which has plenty of power coming out of these USB-C ports. And I've got it propped up so we can watch the screen and it's actually going to be able to tell us how many watts it's delivering to this. I'm going to be using the included cable, which I'm assuming is capable of 100 watts. I would hope since the power bank is capable of 100 watts, they would supply a cable that was also rated for that. That's not labeled, but we'll find out here. So let's go ahead and take this cable and plug it into that USB 1, which is going to be the input slash output. And let's see what we get. And we got the power ramping up here. And it has climbed all the way up to 61.7 watts coming out that single port. And we can tab over and see that it's delivering 19.6 volts at 3.1 amps for a total of 60.7 watts. That's pretty darn close to the rated 65 watts. And on the screen here we can see that it is at 51% and does have an indicator of charging. Well that one is flashing and it looks like there's a little lightning bolt there. So I'm going to assume that means that it is charging and not discharging. So it's going to go ahead and climb up here. So I'm going to go ahead and let that charge for a little bit. And then I'll come back and we'll start testing its own charging abilities. All right, so I got the power bank all the way charged up to 100. And right now I want to test the output capability of this. And we're going to do it a couple different ways. Right now it's just simply going to plug it into a MacBook Pro here. And this MacBook Pro uses USB-C to charge. So it's a very easy connection. Like I said, this is about the most perfect type of power bank for something like a MacBook Pro. Super portable, lots of juice. So let's see how it works. And I'm using the included cable again, just to double check everything. We're gonna go into the system report here on the laptop. And once we go in there, we can go to the power settings and it's gonna tell us what kind of charger it thinks it's plugged into. So this normally would have had a 87 watt charger for this model, but it is able to recognize chargers larger than that. And if we look right here, it shows that yes, it sees an AC charger and that charger is identified as a 100 watt charger. Now, is it actually putting out 100 watts right now? It's hard to tell because there's no indicator on the screen here of how many watts it's putting out and the MacBook doesn't tell you that part. And it's gonna vary, of course, depending on what the laptop is doing, what its charge state is, how active it is. But we're gonna use a little inline power meter here to see how many watts it's actually delivering. All right, so I've just simply plugged this little tiny power meter in line with the charging cable. And we can see here that it is identified it as outputting about 20 volts at 1.3 amps right now. So about 25 watts and that's climbing up. And again, the capability of the charger versus how much it's actually providing at the time is solely based on what the end device is asking for. So in this case, the MacBook is asking for Right now, 38 watts, 39 watts, and that's what it's supplying it. It'll continue to supply more and more as it asks for more and more until it gets to whatever its limit is. So this is just the quick and dirty test. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna set up an actual power load on here, and we're gonna test the output capabilities and also test the total capacity. So let me get that set up and I'll be right back. All right, so to test the capacity of this and the output, validity of it. I've got a power sink here, basically a DC power load that's hooked up. And to make this load ask for any more than five watts, I've got to use a, another little 
test device in here just as a trigger. So this is just acting as a power delivery trigger. It's going to tell the power bank, hey, I need 5 volts, 9 volts, 12 volts, whatever it is. And then that's what it's going to start supplying. And then it's going to go all the way through here, which will measure what the actual voltage and power is. And at the bottom right here, what the capacity is. So it's going to measure it both in milliamp hours and then also have a watt hours, which is the one I'm more concerned about. So this is just defaulted right now to the 5 volts, 3 amps. So let's go ahead and turn on this test. And let's go ahead and tell the load to go ahead and ask for 3 amps. So there's 1, there's 2, and there's 3. Now we get the fan. It's going to be kicking on depending on what power is being drawn and how much heat it needs to dissipate. But right now we basically got the 5 volts at 3 amps. And once we got up to that 3 amps, it did dry it down to about 4.2 volts instead of the full 5. But it is delivering about 12.5 watts. So let's go ahead and bring this up to 9 volts. And we're still asking for 3 amps up here. It's delivering, looks like, 8.2. And it is creating up to 24.7 watts. Let's go ahead and keep on stepping it up. Here's 12 volts, and it's able to produce 11.4, which is pretty good. We'll get 38 watts coming out. Let me go ahead and keep waking this thing up. And let's go ahead up to 15 volts. And we're pretty solid at about 14.4, 43 watts. And finally up to 20 volts. So now we got 20 volts at 3 amps. It's delivering 19.1 we got 57 watts coming into here, coming out of the, the battery bank. This is going to start drawing that battery down, of course, and the capacity here is going to keep on climbing. So let's go ahead and see if we can bring this up to the full 5 amps, which is what the 20 volts is rated at. So there's 4, and we have dropped the voltage down to 18.8. .8. And here is 5, and it only dropped down to 18.6. So we are getting about 93 watts out. That's not bad for a tiny little device like this delivering that much power. So I'm going to go ahead and let this run for a while and see how stable this 20 volt output is. And then I'll probably bring the power down to about 60 watts or so and let it continue to draw the rest of the power out and see what the total capacity is. We don't need to drain it at the full 100 watts. If you've got a device like a MacBook Pro that's drawing the full 100 watts the whole time, you probably just need to have that thing plugged in. This is meant to, you know, top off the batteries, keep them extended, and as we were seeing before, it wasn't delivering the full 100 watts anyways when the laptop was asking for it. So let's go ahead and let this run for a little bit, and I'll be back in a few minutes to knock this down to about 3 amps, and we'll see how much capacity it has. Alright, so I let the power bank get down to about 60%, and then I switched it over to 3 amps, so now it's drawing about 57 watts out of here. We're sitting at right around 33.3 .3 watt hours, which is pretty good for drawing down just about 40% of this. So we're gonna let it go ahead and draw the rest out and see where it lands. All right, we are getting down close to the bottom and I noticed that at about 5%, this started flashing. So we're at 4% now. Let me go ahead and let this finish out and I'll be right back. All right, so we just died out here. It flashed all the way down to double zeros and here's our results. So remember, we're going to ignore the milliamp hours. So we're looking at the purple number, which may be a little hard for you to see, but it says 71.3 watt hours. Now, if you remember when we looked at the specs on the bottom, it had some verbiage about the battery capacity is 91.25 watt hours. That's right there. But the output capacity is 80 watt hours typical. So that means, yes, there's 91.25 watt hours worth of battery in here, but it has to get converted inside here to whatever voltage you're asking for. And when you do that conversion, it loses some. And I said that the 80 out of the 91 would be really good. And we're looking at about 70.3 out of the 91. And that's not bad. And I'll explain why it's not bad. We weren't just drawing 5 watts out of this thing. We were drawing 100 watts out of it for almost half the time. And then 60 watts the rest of the time. Now I'm pretty confident that if we were just drawing you know, 5, 10, 15 watts, these batteries would have been a little bit happier about that, and we would have got a better result, but the test would have just taken forever. So 71.3, I'm not too upset about that, considering 
the size of this thing. Again, look at this right here, which is just about the same capacity, just a little bit more, and it's a heck of a lot bigger. Same power capacity as far as 100 watts output, and only a difference of about 8 or 9 watt hours of capacity, and it is considerably larger. So, pretty impressive what they can do with this little charger. So we've taken a look at the charging capability, we've taken a look at the power delivery capability, and we took a look at all the physical parts of it, and everything checked out. It comes with a nice little bag, it came with a little cable which was capable enough of that 100 watts, and overall it performed about exactly how I expected. So I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, I appreciate if you hit that thumbs up button. If you have any questions about it, or any of the tests that I did, go ahead and drop those down in the comments below. If you've got one of these and you use it every day, go ahead and drop that down in the comments below too. Let me know what you're using it for. I want to thank any of you again for sending this out to test out. So go ahead and check out the rest of the channel. I've got lots of reviews on other power banks and solar generators and all kinds of nifty stuff. And if you find that you enjoy the videos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button too. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I thank you as always for watching. And until next time, peace out and geek out.